DJI is about to drop the Avatar 360, their first ever drone with a built-in 360 camera. Despite what a lot of leaked videos are claiming, there's still no officially confirmed release date. But looking at what's already public, FCC approval, testing units, and the current timing, a launch before the US ban deadline on December 23rd feels very realistic. And that's why this drone is getting so much attention right now, with more photos popping up recently. In this video, I'll show you what we can realistically expect from the Avatar 360, how it compares to the anti-gravity A1 and if it's actually worth waiting for. So let's dive in. We've seen the Avatar 360 name appear in regulatory filings and DJI doesn't file this kind of documentation unless a product is already finalized, tested and close to launch. FCC approval doesn't mean released tomorrow, but it does mean this is no longer an idea or an experiment. On top of that, we've seen multiple real-world prototype photos over the past months. What's interesting is that in some of those photos, the drone looks completely normal. Single forward-facing camera, almost like an avatar 2. And then in other photos, you clearly see two lenses. One on top, one on the bottom. That confused a lot of people, including myself at first. But the explanation turned out to be very smart. Yeah, because DJI designed a rotating camera system. When the drone is in 360 mode, the lenses point up and down, capturing the full sphere. That's how you get the invisible drone effect. No props, no body in the shot. When you switch to a PV mode, the lower lens rotates inward and hides, and the top lens becomes your forward-facing FPV camera. So what looks like two different drones is actually the same drone in two different modes. They're trying to merge two completely different worlds into one product. On one side, you have 360 drones like the Anti-Gravity A1, always filming everything, reframe later, super easy, very creative. On the other side, you have FPV drones, faster, more direct, with much more control, but also more stress and a steeper learning curve. The Avatar 360 is clearly designed to sit right in the middle. For example, if I'm filming myself riding a bike, hiking or skiing, full 360 mode makes a lot of sense. I don't have to worry about framing at all, I just fly and figure it out later in editing. But if I'm flying through a tight spot, following a subject or I want that classic FPV look. I'd switch to FPV mode and fly it like a normal avatar. That flexibility is what makes this drone interesting. Now, a lot of people are asking the same thing in the comments. Will the Avatar 360 have smart modes and tracking? Well, nothing is officially confirmed yet, but if DJI brings over even part of what we've already seen on drones like the Neo 2, things like follow modes, subject tracking, or even basic gesture control, that would be huge because it lowers the barrier for getting usable shots. A lot of creators don't want to fly full manual FPV all the time. They want to focus on the idea, the movement, the story, not constantly fight the controls. And this is where DJI usually does very well. They're one of the few companies that manage to balance engineering thinking with creator thinking. You see it in their transmission systems, in stabilization and in how predictable their drones feel in the air. That matters way more than people think, especially when you're filming yourself or working solo. If the Avatar 360 inherits even part of that philosophy, it could be one of its biggest strengths. Another question I get asked is, will it be under 250 grams? So based on everything we've seen so far, dual cameras, a rotating mechanism, protected frame and battery size, keeping this under 250 grams would be very challenging. Especially when you consider that the Avatar 2 already weighs over 370 grams. So realistically, I wouldn't expect this to be um, under 250 grams. And honestly, I don't think that's the deciding factor for most people looking at this product. If you're already flying an Avatar 2, weight regulations are probably not your main concern. What people really care about is how stable it is, how forgiving it feels and how much stress it removes while filming. Another topic that's creating a lot of discussion is goggles. DJI seems to be sticking with Goggles 3 and Goggles M3. Some people are happy about that, others are disappointed, especially when they look at what Insta360 is doing with the anti-gravity A1. The A1 feels much more like a VR experience, it really feels like a flying 360 camera. DJI's approach is different. The Avatar 360 feels more like an FPV drone that happens to shoot 360. Neither approach is better on paper. It really depends on how you like to create. 
if you want the easiest possible experience, always recording everything, reframing later and almost zero stress. The Anti-Gravity A1 makes a lot of sense. It's already out, it shoots 8K 360, it has its own goggles and you know exactly what you're getting. DJI's appeal is versatility. Being able to switch between a full 360 mode and a classic forward-facing FPV mode on the same drone is something we've never really had before. I'm excited to see what's coming and I'll keep covering this as real info comes out. Subscribe if you want to follow along. So how do these two drones really compare in practice? The Anti-Gravity A1 is essentially a 360 camera that flies. It's designed around the idea of capturing everything and deciding later. The Avatar 360 feels like an FPV drone first, with 360 added as a creative layer. If your priority is ease and guaranteed results with minimal effort, the A1 is very appealing. If your priority is control, versatility and being able to switch styles mid-flight, the Avatar 360 becomes more interesting. This isn't really about which drone is better, it's about which one matches how you like to shoot. Now, let's talk about the US situation with DJI for a second. If you followed the news, you probably heard that DJI might be banned in the US from December 23rd. Some people are already leaning toward anti-gravity simply because it feels like the safer option right now. And if you live and work with DJI products in the US, that's a valid concern. I've already made a full video breaking down the DJI ban situation. I'll link it here if you want to understand what's actually happening. That said, DJI wouldn't go through certification, testing and global documentation if this product wasn't meant to ship properly. We just have to see how the next few weeks play out. So what should we expect? First of all, this is not a drone for everyone. If you're a hardcore FPV pilot who wants full manual control and the lightest possible setup, you'll probably still prefer the Avatar 2 or a custom build. But if you're a creator who wants versatility, the freedom of flying in FPV mode and switch to 360 mode when you want, the Avatar 360 starts to make a lot of sense. For me personally, that's why I'm watching this launch so closely. Not because of hype, but because if DJI gets this right, this isn't just another drone, it's a new way of flying and filming at the same time. And I'll add one last personal thought before we wrap up. I bought the Avatar 2 less than a year ago to properly start learning FPV. And honestly, um, it's been super interesting, but it's also way harder than it looks from the outside. FPV takes time, it takes practice, and yeah, there's always the risk of crashing your drone while you're learning. So when something like the Avatar 360 comes along, something that could lower that barrier a bit without killing the FPV feeling, that's when it really gets interesting to me. Especially for creators who want great looking shots, but don't want to spend months just learning how not to crash. So let's see how this story unfolds over the next few days. I'll keep covering this as real info comes out, so subscribe if you want to follow along.